listen to Tidy's piece and you're like, I am on a time machine to American music. And this is really an American concerto. It yeah. really is. This couldn't be written any, anywhere else. The Abrams concerto is filled with Americana. As the overture progresses, it recalls the big band sound world of Duke Ellington, as well as Paul Whiteman and Ferdé Grofe, who originally orchestrated Rhapsody in Blue for its premiere with Paul Whiteman and his band in 1924. Gershwin was kind of the spiritual grandfather of, of the concerto that I wrote. Whereas Gershwin wrote his Rhapsody at the dawn of the jazz age, Teddy is composing with the whole of 20th century popular music in his rearview mirror. And his concerto is a grand homage to the musical inheritance of the 20th century. These are really specific styles that are that are being conjured at any at any time. It's not just the idea of something that's vaguely jazzy. It's like this this is meant to sound like, you know, a Benny Goodman kind of swing groove. This is meant to sound like bop. In addition to expanded brass and percussion sections, the Abrams Concerto calls for an entirely separate jazz band to keep the groove going. There's even a Gene Krupa Tom Tom section. In the first cadenza Yuja plays, you can hear allusions to Art Tatum and Jerry Lee Lewis. It's like listening to the evolution of American popular music, rooted in the blues but branching off and flowering into different styles, from jazz and swing to rock and roll, soul, funk, disco, R&B, you name it. I have this, this mark like Nile Rodgers style funk at bar for 81, which is in the guitar. He's one of the great American musicians of the last 50 years, but a lot of people know him from Daft Punk, where he plays on uh, um, Get Lucky. And he's, he does this drumming thing on, on the guitar, which is really distinctive. It's... Yeah, it's mm. I thought that was a melody. I didn't hear the guitar when I was playing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's like a Latin groove behind it. So this is like a slowly bubbling Latin groove underneath. I mean, the influence of Afro-Cuban rhythm on all of jazz cannot be overstated. Like, I mean, that that really is where so much of the rhythmic sensibilities come from. So that's what, what I'm kind of drawing here. Like, it starts off with you playing this, like, nice little romantic, it's the arpeggio thing. Exactly. And that becomes more and more like intense and eventually bubbles up into this you know, <laughs> Which is like Latin and some rap at the same time. Uh -huh. You know, it's like in the club. <laughs> when they sing. I love the percussion. Have you heard percussionists sing? It's the best thing. Ding, 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 ding. I haven't even mentioned the allusions to the Beatles, Broadway, spaghetti western soundtracks, John Williams film scores. And there's even a nod to 80s electronica. Clearly, we've come a long way from the American sound world heard in Rhapsody in Blue. Nevertheless, the medium through which Teddy explores these different popular styles was the romantic piano concerto tradition hailing from Europe. Mm -hmm. 